Hello photographers, today I'm going to share with you how to choose the best settings for low light photography. However, I'm not actually going to tell you what settings to choose, rather I'm going to share with you the process you can use to choose the best settings for the situation you are shooting in. When shooting in low light, we typically have two primary concerns. The first is to get a photo that is not blurry, and the second is to get a photo that is well exposed. Both of those concerns are managed through your ISO aperture and shutter speed settings. Our first concern to address is the potential blur in the image, which we manage with the shutter speed, and choosing the shutter speed to do this is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is look at your lens to see what focal length you have it zoomed to, and then set your shutter speed to as close to one over the focal length as you can. For example, on my camera, the lens is zoomed to 100 millimeters. That means I want to set my shutter speed to 1 one hundredth of a second. Setting your shutter speed like this gets you to the shutter speed that will give you the most light possible, but still give you a sharp photo. Next, we're going to set the aperture, and this one is even easier than setting the shutter speed. Because we're in low light, the concern here is to get as much light into the camera as possible. So we're going to set the aperture to the largest aperture open possible, that would be the smallest aperture setting available for your lens. This will vary from lens to lens, but in my case the smallest aperture setting is f2.8. And then finally the ISO setting. But you can't just set the ISO all willy-nilly. What you need to do is point the camera at the subject you are going to photograph, and then adjust your ISO, most likely by increasing it, to bring your exposure indicator to an exposure value of zero. In my case, I have to set the camera ISO to 800. Now I know what you're thinking, in fact I can feel the internet freaking out over the very idea that I would dare to increase my ISO. If you haven't gathered by the sarcasm, I think that's total bullshit. You're shooting in low light. If you want to get your shot, you're going to have to increase your ISO. And yes, you'll likely have noise in that image. My philosophy on ISO is this. Your ISO should be as high as it needs to be and as low as is possible. This will give you the least amount of noise possible with the best exposure possible for the situation you are shooting in. Once you've set your ISO, you can take a photo and evaluate the exposure. You're looking for two things. The two things we started with at the beginning. One, you want to verify that it's sharp. It should be based on the shutter speed you set, but it's always good to check. If it's not sharp, you'll need to bump up your shutter speed a bit and adjust your ISO up as well. The second thing you're looking for is the exposure itself. If you're happy with the exposure and the image is sharp, then you're good to go. If you're not happy with the exposure, then adjust your ISO up or down depending on whether or not you want to make the image brighter or darker. Now there are a few provisos here, a couple of quid pro quo. But before we get to that, I want to let you know that I put this entire process, as well as the provisos we're about to cover, into a free low light photography cheat sheet, which you can get at this link right here. So the first proviso is that when shooting in low light, that light typically has a pretty strong color cast to it. It's often into the orange spectrum, but depending on the situation, that can vary. Either way, you're going to want to adjust your white balance to make sure the colors in your image look good. In my case, the light I'm shooting in is quite warm, so I'm switching to the in incandescent white balance setting, which clears up the color cast very nicely. The second is image stabilization. Back at the beginning, we started with the shutter speed and the process of setting the shutter speed to one over the focal length of the lens does not take image stabilization into account. If you have image stabilization, it is possible that you can use a shutter speed that is slower than one over the focal length of your lens and still get sharp photos. If you do have image stabilization, you're going to have to test it to find the limits. Test it at different focal lengths and see how slow you can get your shutter speed and still get sharp photos. Test it on every lens and take notes so you can refer back to them when you need the information in a hurry. Also, whether or not you're shooting with image stabilization, you have to remember that if your subject is moving, even a little bit, you'll need to keep your shutter speed set at 1 30th of a second or faster. This is roughly the shutter speed at which motion from subject movement will show up, and image stabilization will do nothing to combat subject movement. The final proviso is that if the situation allows it, you can and should use a tripod. With a tripod, if your subject is still, you can use longer shutter speeds and lower ISOs to get that shot without that dreaded noise. But even with a tripod, you still have to be careful of camera shake, 
particularly when triggering the shutter. And in those situations, I recommend using a remote or the camera self timer to avoid any motion blur. Finally, don't forget that you can get my free low light photography cheat sheet at this link right here. Now, I have a question for you. What is your favorite lens to shoot with and why? Let me know in the comments, which is also where you'll find my favorite lens. And if you have any questions about this, leave a comment and I'll answer it for you. And then do me a favor and like this video and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos and get out there and take some damn photos. I just recorded this entire video with the mic on mute. Real life facepalm. Thank you for watching. Now, I get loads of questions and they all boil down to one thing, which is how do I make my camera do what I want it to do? And here's the thing, your camera is like an instrument and you can't make music if you can't play your instrument. If you want to learn how to play your camera like the instrument it is, visit this link right here to check out my guide to shooting in manual mode video course.